You may be operating in a prophetic. You may be uh, doing your podcast. It may be your YouTube. It may be a daycare that you open. It may be a nonprofit that you started, but you should also be in purpose, at least starting the process of purpose. Because that also is almost like he keeps you busy for the kingdom. Like your eyes are not so focused on that because you're busy doing kingdom assignments. While you're attending to kingdom work, God is taking care of home. But if you find yourself, oh gosh, what she just uh, described that kind of pricked me, it convicted me. Take it back to Holy Spirit, you know, um, just to make sure that this is your word. Ask the Lord, petition him for it. But I, I will say this and I've said it a bunch of times. If you petition the Lord for something, you know, wanting to know if you're in error or whatever that looks like for a moment when we don't know God's grace will cover it. But the moment he knows that we've gotten it and we can act like we don't know. I talk about this in Married to Purpose also. The moment he knows that we've gotten it, we're now held accountable for the revelation that Holy Spirit has revealed to us. So in Married to Purpose, not only do we speak about God ordained marriages, but it's what is your purpose outside of your marriage in addition to your marriage? Who were you called and created to be? How does God desire to use you in this hour? So we go through, you know, many, many of the uh, mentees that are a part of this community. At the beginning, they had no idea, but many of them, and I want to say we're maybe about, maybe two, almost three months in, because some of you guys have seen me kind of uh, not so active on my social media account with my uh, messages. And that's only because my assignment is over there with married to purpose. So many of them have begun to not only know what their gifts are, but they're starting to put their hands to the plow and purpose. So their focus is not so much on just marriage anymore. And they're going through the steps. They're going through the motions. They're transitioning from faith to faith and glory to glory. Now, granted, not everybody's on the same level. We have some that are a little more stubborn, some that, you know, Holy Spirit will um, use me to offer them a kind rebuke, you know, like you're in error with this. You're seeing this improperly. Take a step back. So we go through all the steps. That's something that you can expect with uh, the Married to Purpose community. We go through all the steps to teach you how to properly steward, thank you, Holy Spirit, the marriage assignment, but also how to properly steward the mantle that you've been given, the oil that uh, the Lord has placed on the inside of you, the gifts. Go back to the Lord to see if you have possibly skipped any steps when it comes to waiting for tangible manifestation for your promise, marriage promise, whatever that promise looks like. But pertaining to the marriage, if you find yourself antsy and eager and still tossing and turning over it, and I need to know this and I want to know this and I desire this, it's idolatry and you have not yet, you're still underdeveloped, right? So the Lord is going to still keep you in that process until he sees fit to release you to give you more strategies and insight and instructions. Also, when you're in purpose, Holy Spirit is downloading to you what your spouse is going through, what they're enduring, maybe what judgment or correction looks like, even without you asking. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Like that's another reward from the Lord because it's like, okay, you've been a... a it's been job well done, good and faithful servant over here. You've stewarded well. You've endured well. You've put your hands to the plow well, whatever that looks like. So even without you petitioning the Lord, Lord, what is my spouse going through? What season are they in? What are they dealing with? Are they thinking about me? You don't even have to ask God. That's not a concern of yours, nor is it a worry, but Holy Spirit sees fit to reward you with insight with what's going on over there. That's for that group of people that went through those processes, submitted to it, endured it, completed it well, and the Lord will reward you with um, what's going on on the other side of the mountain that you may have no knowledge of. It's a lot of things the Holy Spirit re uh, reveals to the standard, especially the wife, when you're in alignment and in agreement with the Lord. But when you find yourself still so focused on that, you're out of alignment and there's no order in your heart. There's no order in your life. God is a God of order. He's not going to bless a mess. He's not going to bless you with this if you're going to idolize this, right? So if you are still making that man an idol, that woman an idol, that promise an idol, that career an idol, income an idol, like whatever that looks like, he's not going to bless you with it because you're not in a proper position. And that leaves the enemy a space to come in and... um your, your promise is now like vulnerable because you will not be a good steward over it. 
and you will manipulate that blessing. That blessing now feels like a burden or you weren't in a position to handle it well and to steward it well. Because when you get to the promised land, y'all, you still need God. You still need him to sustain you and give you strategies. Lord, teach me how to sustain this. Teach me how to maintain this. Teach me how to multiply this. Because the last thing you want is for the Lord to bless you with what you have been praying and waiting and interceding for for all this time. You finally receive it and then it blows up in your face or you lose it because the enemy snatched it up or I'll take that back. Not necessarily the enemy snatched it up. He allowed you to self-sabotage it. Okay. Because there is a space where like he can't take what God has given from you, but if you're not stewarding it well and taking care of it well and going through the process, well, whatever that looks like, there will be a time that you have put your mouth on it, your hands on it. Like it's, that's a whole nother message. I'm not even going to get into that, but do not skip any steps. Okay. Oh, girl. <laughs> y'all be blessed. And I'll see y'all next time. And it's probably going to be a two part message. This might be part two if you have gotten to this part. See y'all next time. Bye.